I, I think whatever the cast reader is asking for in a slate, like name, height, location, sometimes they'll ask, tell us a little about yourself. I don't think they necessarily need to add a button, uh, you know, because ultimately that slate is just supposed to be you relaxed. Mm -hmm. You know, I find, I find that slates where people add too much into it, where they want to like show personality tend to come off false. I just want to see you as you in a slate without any adornment in a way. So I wouldn't worry too much about, about that because you're, you're showing yourself in a slate no matter what you do. What I say to actors in the room or, you know, on a Zoom where, um, where I can see that they're just, that I can see all of the work that they've put into it, because that's what it's about. It's not that you're doing too much, it's that you're showing me your work. And I just want to, and I usually just say to them, all of your choices are great. You have, you have a smart intention, it's strong. Trust that it's there for you and let it go. And that generally, for the most part, usually is the, is the, is the key. Just knowing that they have the permission to let it go. It's still all of those choices are there. That's, that's ingrained into what they've done and what they've been working on and practicing with. And um, it doesn't leave them. It just makes it a more relaxed situation because that's all you really need is relaxation. I look for an agent who's smart enough to know my taste and what I'm what I'm working on and the taste of the project that I'm doing. Um, an agent that pushes 70 people for one role is not someone that I believe is doing their job appropriately. The agents that come to me and say, I've just submitted 15 people, these are the two that I really think are gonna be right on, so can you, can you consider these two people? And then I look at them and I'm like, oh yeah, they know what they're talking about, they know what I'm doing. So that's what I look for. I look for specificity, which is I think everything that everybody should be doing. Specificity is super important, not only in your choices as an actor, but in every aspect of this business. And um, yeah, and an understanding of what I'm doing and, and who I am and what I respond to. If I'm watching the demo reel, it's because I need to see more than just the audition. But like the majority of the time I don't watch demo reels unless unless I have a very specific reason to watch them. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just me, because okay. you will audition for me, I, assu I assume. I mean, I may not, you know. No, I, yeah. <laughs> you know. So if you audition for me, you're doing what I need you to do. I don't necessarily need to see your body of work okay. um, in a way that's gonna help you get the job. If I'm, looking, if, I'm, if I'm looking at demo material, it's because I'm looking for something very specific that I need the director to see. Um, that will help the actor get the job because there's going to be a part of this character in a future episode or, or down the line in the movie that isn't reflected in the sides. But I know that this actor can do it because I've seen them have a similar reaction or, or emotional arc on this particular thing. And then I will find it in that demo reel, I will cut it and I will just use that. So for me, I can't give you the answer on how long the demo reel is because I create my own ultimately. What I like to say with co-star roles is look at the, look at what the material is, right? It, it's very rare that a co-star is going to have a name. It's going to be a profession. It's going to be a bartender. It's going to be a waitress. It's going to be a, 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 an assistant, a mayor. Like, you know, so already you have an idea of what the expectation is from a profession. How do you embrace that profession? Like if you're a waitress, this or if you're an assistant, the the side may not say to you, like you're, you're in your notebook, you're on your phone, you're ready, but why don't you make that choice? Because what else would an assistant be doing? They're in the middle of working. They're not just waiting for somebody to come. So it's a little bit of like, play the environment, think of the environment, think of what the, the role is. Because again, with co-star roles, you're not the star of the show. You're there to help support and tell the story. So you don't want to make it all about you, but you want to make it real for you. And all one lines have like a beginning and a middle and an end, right? Where do you start? Where do you end? And that's, you know, that's the best that I can say for, for those sort of co-star roles. But think about it in terms of like who, this, who the character is, what they want, what they're doing, and like, and, and know that it's, you know, a profession, not a person. I go to theater all the time. I watch so much TV and film, like it's absurd. I can promise you I've seen more than any of you in this room, no offense. Um, I watch YouTube, I watch, I watch skits on different things. Like, I'm not really big on the whole uh, tick, ticky talk thing. Like, I don't do that. Like, that's not, that's not 
my thing. Like I don't want to discover a TikTok star. Like that's not <laughs> what I do and not what I enjoy doing. But I, I see I see content everywhere. So and it, it's not about and discovering is I think the wrong choice because everybody exists already. It's just about seeing something in someone in a moment somewhere. Uh, and thinking, ah, oh, that person might be good for this thing that I'm working on. Let's give it a shot and giving them the opportunity. But I, I, I see people everywhere. And I, you know, work, work begets work, right? Like, don't sit around waiting for people to call you. Go out, do stuff. If you want to create your own short, you never know what's going to happen. You know, you all have friends in this business in some capacity. I'm sure they're not just actors. I'm sure they're also DPs. I'm sure that they're costume designers. I'm sure that they're editors and yada, on, 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 and on, and on. Take advantage of that, you know. If if work is not if work is not plentiful right now, which truthfully it's not, the industry is still on a slow upswing from the strike. Generate it yourself until until you you know f you have to find that fulfillment where you are. Oh my God, so many submissions. I remember I, I released a breakdown and um, and for one role, female, twenty two to twenty four, and I had twelve thousand submissions oh. just for that one role. Yeah. Um, I do look at everything. I think the thing to the thing to remember is that it's all done online now. And before, in the olden days, I would have hard copies of things, and I would never look at a picture first. I would always look at the resume because on the resume I could see what the training was. I could see if they were still active in the theater, and like that's super important to me because I want to work with actors that are continuing to hone their craft and work on what they do. Um, now everything is in a thumbnail picture, and so for me, it's about being able to see your eyes because I think the eyes tell a lot of the story. Um, and if the photo is too far away and I'm on a page of a hundred people that I'm looking at, it's, it's not really feasible for me to be able to click every single person and look at the resume. So you want to make sure that your face, that, that it is a good representation of you that I can see your eyes. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the best way to do it. I wouldn't do any sort of gimmicky thing to add anything in there. I don't think that's, that's helpful. But, you know, if you find that you are not getting called in from your headshot, it may be time to look at that headshot and decide whether or not that's really serving you. Or if you're not getting called in for the roles you think you should be getting called in for, if that makes sense. When I'm auditioning for a job, uh, they send me a script and I read it and I think of a couple key, key creative ideas for some of the leads so we can see if we're on the same page creatively. Because if I have a different creative vision for the project than they do, it's not going to work out. Um, That's interesting. And I always pick people that are not available because you never give away your work for free. And... Uh, yeah, so that's 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 how I get a job. Um, <laughs> if I have the job and we're starting the casting process, I will take that script and I will break it down. And I will, having conversations with the, the director, the producers, the creator of the project, determine what are the key things that they are looking for in that character and create and script a breakdown that I think best represents the way to get submissions that will match what they're asking for. And then I will send it to them and they will either tell me that it's great or they'll tell me, oh, this is shit, let's do something different. And then they correct it and then they send it back to me and then I send it to the studio and then the studio either approves or doesn't, which sometimes they don't, and then they send it back and then we have to do it again and then we do that. And then the same with sides. Like a lot of times, for a lot of my projects, I have them generate sides because there's a lot of, um, there's like a lot of NDA material around it and they don't want any of spoilers out there. So... Uh, I don't end up having to cut some sides, but they're never with large amounts of space between them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's just dependent on the thing, and that, that's sort of how it all goes. Like it's a, it's a lot of negotiating between different people, figuring out the best way to approach something. And there are times where I we release a breakdown, and then halfway through the casting process, we realize we got it wrong, and we have to readjust how we're looking at a character. It's a it's a fluid it's it's a fluid conversation. So my email's super easy to find on the internet. It's very very easy to find on the internet. It's my personal as well as my professional email. Just know that I get between 500 and 800 emails a day. Yeah. And while I do look at everything, I can't always respond to everything. So please 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 do not be offended if I do not if I do not respond uh, in a timely manner or at all just because. But I would love to get 
you know, if you're in something that I can watch, something that I can TiVo if I'm not able to watch it live, if there's a show in New York where you're not playing angel number two that you're really proud of that you want me to come see, like, let me know about that. You know, it, it helps to keep you relevant in my, or like, in the forefront of my mind. Cause I know that you're still working, you're in the city, you're still looking, you're still busy or, you know, all of those things. Um, but that's, that's how I like to be kept in touch with. I, I, I would not encourage you to email me with questions because I have this very sick sense of obligation that I need to respond to it. And then I will get frustrated because I've already said that I can't really respond to 800 emails a day. So please don't ask me questions in emails. I'm sorry. It's really important to have hobbies. It's really important to have love of things outside of what we do because those experiences help shape the way we view roles, the way we view performance, the way we, do, we view storytelling. Um, so if I was, I mean, if I have to pick something that I'm really getting joy out of right now that I think feeds the creativity, it's, it's baking weird shit. But like the kind of weird shit, like the is it cake weird shit, where like I bake a cake that looks like something entirely different. I don't know how that feeds into the art of casting yet, but I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually.